What's going on? Squid Dude here, and today we're going over to my good dude, Justin Oy's workshop, where he's been kind enough to give us a little bit of his time and knowledge, and we're gonna be going over batteries, and he'll be addressing all the basic stuff and a little bit more in depth on how they work and why they work certain ways. So it's a very informative piece. We got plenty of diagrams, so check it out, and hopefully you and myself will learn something. Thanks, Ryan. Hi guys, I'm Justin Noy, and you have no idea who I am. I'm a part-time box modder from Dayton, Ohio. I've known Ryan for uh, probably over a year now. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about batteries, what they are, uh, how to use them safely, and different ways to arrange them to make the perfect vape for you. So hopefully we can answer any questions you have and correct any misconceptions you may have about how these things work. So the battery we use most often is the 18650. Now, why is it called the 18650? Well, it actually refers to the shape of the battery. Uh, the 18650 has a diameter of 18 millimeters and a length of 65 millimeters, while the zero represents the fact that it's round. Now, there's different types of 18650 lithium batteries, as some of you may know. The ones we tend to use are IMR or INR. Uh, what that means is for the I, that represents that the cell is lithium. For the M and the N, the M represents manganese and the N is for nickel. And the R means that the cell is round. There is another type of lithium ion battery worth mentioning, and that's the ICR, where the C stands for cobalt. This is uh, one here that I use in one of my flashlights. The ICR is different from the IMR or INR is in that this is what's called a protected cell. And if we look when compared to uh, the Samsung 25R, you'll see when I put them side to side that the ICR is a little bit taller on the top end. And the reason for that is that there's an extra PCB or a circuit board inside the battery that controls how much current that battery can output. That may sound like a great safety feature, but the problem with that is if that circuitry were to fail, then the chemistry in this battery reacts pretty violently. Also, these protected cells tend to only be able to output 10 amps on the top end, so for most purposes, these won't do it for us. So let's look inside one of these 18650 cells to see what makes them tick. Looking at this diagram here, we see that the inside of the 18650 cell is actually made up of uh, a couple different components, and for the most part, the important ones are the negative and positive, or in uh, battery terms, what we call the anode and the cathode. So inside the main body of the battery is uh, wrapped alternating layers of this anode and cathode material. And when the battery is constructed, it's actually filled with an electrolyte solution containing lithium salts. All of that is encased inside of the stainless steel container and sealed up. What happens when you put a, put a load across the two terminals of the battery is that it allows electrodes to flow between the anode and the cathode, and that's what gives you voltage. A couple of important parts to notice to the battery also is the uh, gasket and safety vent, which is located right under the cathode at the top of the battery. And should the battery fail, this is where your gases will vent from. Another important thing to know is that the entire outside canister of the battery up until that cathode cap is actually the entire negative terminal of the battery. So that's why the outside of the battery is wrapped in the insulating plastic. Should the plastic get broken, that exposed area is actually part of the neg negative terminal of the battery. So let's talk about what the best battery manufacturers and vendors are. For the most part, the best batteries that you're going to get are going to come from companies with uh, names you know from outside of the vaping life. Companies with names like LG or Samsung or Sony. Now, you may also see batteries with labels from companies like EFAS, Trustfire, uh, Surefire, and things like that. So, something you have to know about the battery market is that batteries are actually very expensive to produce. It takes millions of dollars of research, technology, and equipment to produce batteries, so that's why only those major companies that I just talked about are the ones that actually do it. So where do those other batteries actually come from? 
Well, what happens is that when a company like Samsung produces their batteries, what they do is they test them internally to make sure that they're up to what they consider their specifications. So they'll take the batteries and they'll test them and this battery may be working perfectly. So that will go into what they call the A-bin. And maybe the next battery they test uh, doesn't work perfectly. Maybe the internal resistance is a little too high. Maybe it's just a little bit uh, dented up from the manufacturing process or it has some other issue with it. So it may go into what's called the B or the C bin where they put their uh, slightly imperfect batteries. Now the batteries that go into the A bin are the ones that actually get the company's logo and wrapping on them. These batteries are generally sold to major corporations to uh, manufacture battery packs for uh, say your laptop, your drill, or uh, the battery pack inside the Tesla Roadster. So what happens to all of the B and C bin batteries that don't get the Sony or Samsung name on them? Well, generally what happens to those is a smaller company that doesn't manufacture their own cells will go to the major company and offer the money for their uh, imperfect batteries. And what they'll do is they'll buy them up and put their own logo on them and sell them to consumers. Now that's not to say that these are bad batteries by any means. They're still, they were still made by one of those major manufacturers, but there was some reason that the original manufacturer didn't feel comfortable selling with their, that battery with their name on it. So something that every vapor should know, but unfortunately not everyone does, is Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law simply states that voltage is equal to the product of current times resistance. So the application of this is if you were using a mechanical mod, you would take the voltage of your battery, which fresh off the charger will be 4.2, and that's equal to I, which is the current, times the resistance. So you should be using your ohm meter to find the resistance of your build, and you would be able to solve for I, which would give you the current, and that would help you determine whether or not that build is safe for your battery. The other equation that Vapor should know is called the power equation, and that's what helps you determine how many watts your device is putting out. The power equation is power equals current times voltage, and it also equals the square of the current times the resistance. One important aspect to keeping your batteries healthy is charging. When you're looking for a charger, the biggest thing to do is make sure you don't cheap out on it. You want a reputable charger because bad things can happen to your batteries if you don't get a good one. Uh, if you're, you get a charger that tends to overcharge the batteries, it can actually overcharge them to the point where the batteries will explode in the charger. So I recommend uh, a couple of different chargers. The uh, Luke 4 charger is very good by eFest. There's also uh, the X-Star charger. Uh, those are all chargers uh, that are so-called smart chargers. They can actually determine what type of battery is in them and charge them appropriately along with having different uh, slides in them that allow them to charge many different types of batteries. So this one can handle anything from an 18350 to a 26650 without a problem. When charging your batteries, you want to make sure that unless you actually need to charge them very quickly, I recommend actually charging your batteries on the slowest setting on your charger because that will put the least amount of stress on your cells. So let's talk about a topic that's uh, near and dear to most vapors' heart, the concept of uh, voltage drop. So what exactly is voltage drop? So when you're using a mechanical mod, you probably know that when you put a battery in and screw on an Addy and hit the fire button, you're not getting that full 4.2 volts to your atomizer. Now why is that? Most people think of the difference between the voltage your battery is putting out and the battery you're actually getting at the atomizer as your voltage drop. Which is true, but that doesn't paint the entire picture. There's another concept called battery sag that most people aren't aware of. And what that means is that when you put a load on a battery, the voltage that the battery by itself, not even inside your mod, the voltage that the battery puts out is going to be depressed uh, because the battery is actually straining to put out that much uh, voltage under your current load. Now to demonstrate how this actually works, I've got a demo set up for you guys. I've got uh, a 510 connector wired up here. I'm going to uh, screw an Addy on it, and we're actually going to uh, clip this in 
to my test battery sled and hook this up and do a reading with my multimeter so that you can actually see a visual representation of what the difference between that battery sag and voltage drop actually is. So here's the setup we were just talking about. Here clipped in my soldering squid, I have my 510 connector with an atomizer on it. It's running a 0.3 build and behind it is the negative lead to the battery sled and the positive lead is free floating right now and I'm going to have Ryan connect that to the positive lead of the 510 when we're ready to go. I'm going to be using this multimeter on voltage mode to actually get a reading on the battery and the 510 connector so that you can see the representation of what it looks like uh, between the battery sag and the actual voltage drop of the system. So if I take the leads for my multimeter now while the circuit's open and there's no load coming across and I connect it directly to the terminals of the battery, get a read on it and see if we can get a consistent read. I'm going to go with 4.14 on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the uh, probes of the multimeter to the battery again directly to the terminals and I'm going to have Ryan connect the positive lead of the battery to the positive lead of the 510 so we can see what's going on under load. So I'm going to, uh, not quite yet, and we're stable, go ahead. And we're good. So while Ryan had that connected, we saw on the screen that we actually dropped to about 3.8 volts. So that means we actually dropped 0.35 volts while that was connected. Now, my leads were connected directly to the battery, so what does that mean? That means that the battery, not even taking into account anything else on the system, was dropped by 0.35 volts. So 3.8 volts under load, I should point out that voltage drop is only relevant if you're going to use a build that you're actually going to use for daily use. The amount of voltage that the battery is going to drop under load depends on current, and because of Ohm's law, we know that current depends on resistance. So when you hear that a mod has a uh, voltage drop under 0.1 or 0.01 or something like that, that information isn't actually meaningful unless you know what type of build was being put on it when it was put under load. So now that we've gotten the baseline read on the battery, what I'm going to do is take the leads and connect them as close to the load as I can right on the terminals of the 510. So I'm going to place my leads now on the positive and negative. And Ryan, go ahead. And 3.38. So what does that mean? So while the battery was still putting out um, 3.8 volts here and here, when I connected the terminals here and here, I was getting a read of 3.38, which is a difference of 0.42 volts. So that is actually what the voltage drop for this system is under that kind of load. So it's the reading at the terminals of the 510 minus the reading at the terminals of the battery that gives you your actual voltage drop for the system. So the amount of sag that's in the battery is something that no mod can do anything about. You could have the purest copper mod on the planet and you would still see a battery sag of 0.35. Now, how well the rest of the system is machined is what determines your voltage drop at the atomizer. Now, because this uh, system isn't very well connected electrically because alligator clips uh, don't make a great electrical connection and these wires are undersized, we saw a pretty significant voltage drop under this load at 0.42. So now that we've talked some about voltage drop and the different ways single batteries are set up, let's talk about how multiple batteries can be set up in different configurations. In a parallel setup, the uh, batteries will generally face in the same direction. And if I were to lay them out side by side, it would look something like this. I would have all of the positives of all the batteries connected, and I would have all of the negatives connected and the batteries would act as one larger battery. So I would connect my negative here, 
my positive here, or uh, in the case of mod, this would go off to my 510 uh, positive pin, and this would go off to the negative or to the switch. So when you parallel batteries, the overall voltage of this battery pack remains the same. So these two batteries together will put out 4.2 volts on the top end off the charger. What changes about them is that the two batteries will actually share their amp limit. So if these were 30 amp batteries, um, you would be able to safely push more than 30 amps using the two batteries. Now, one of the misconceptions about that is that your amp limit will actually double. If the system were actually ideal and you had absolutely uh, perfect conductors um, for your contacts and the jumpers between the batteries had no resistance to them, the contact to the battery were physically uh, permanently connected, that would be true. However, in the real world, since we can remove batteries and wires actually do have resistance, there's some inefficiencies there that would cause your current limit to not quite double. The uh, rule of thumb that I've always heard is uh, about one and a half times your current limit. So these two batteries, if they were uh, 30 amps individually, we could say that we could just safely push 45 on the two of them. One of the aspects of the parallel arrangement is that the mel amp hours or capacity of the two batteries is shared between them. So that means that you're getting uh, double the battery life than you would uh, firing the same build on two batteries as opposed to one. Series works a little differently than parallel. Let's uh, look at it from the positive and negative again. Now, instead of having them side by side like this, uh, series is sometimes always also referred to as stacked batteries. So instead of having them side by side with the positive and negatives connected, I'll actually have them uh, one after the other here. So you see I have the negative of one battery touch touching the positive of the other and a single lead connecting one to the negative and one to the positive. Now in this setup, the voltage will be doubled. So instead of uh, 4.2 volts on the top end, we're going to have 8.4 volts from terminal to terminal. So that means you'll have uh, more power coming out of uh, your Addy, and that means uh, there's a misconception there that that makes uh, series setups more dangerous. Now that isn't necessarily true because uh, the one advantage of the series setup is that you don't have the uh, potential to accidentally vent your batteries should you put one in backwards. Um, that uh, is a problem that only exists with a parallel setup. Now with the series setup, I said that the total milliamp hour stays the same, but the voltage goes up. Now looking at the power formula again, you'll find that voltage times current is what gives you uh, your wattage. And in this case, when you're comparing a parallel setup and a series setup, it's the wattage that matters. So if I were running the ser or if I were running this parallel setup and I was firing a one ohm coil, that would give me uh, a current of 4.2 amps and give me 17.46 watts. So if I were to run these batteries in series, that would mean that I'm getting 8.4 volts instead of 4.2. So the uh, voltage is doubled and I'd get the same amount of milliamp hours. But if I were to run it that on a 4 ohm coil instead of 1, I would get 17.46 watts, which is the equivalent of what we had in the parallel setup. So with that 4 ohm coil, I would get the same amount of wattage, which means that these two batteries in this arrangement would last just as long as these two batteries in this arrangement. So one aspect of battery safety for multiple batteries that not everyone uh, pays attention to is uh, a concept called pairing. So you'll hear people talk about that when you buy a multiple battery mod sometimes. What exactly does that mean? So when you're using two batteries together, you'll want them to uh, wear and age at about the same rate. So when you uh, pair or marry batteries, uh, what you want to do is buy two or however many, many batteries you need and you want to use them and charge them uh, together and only use them in the same device uh, with each other. And what this does is it makes the uh, batteries age more evenly. The reason that's important is that if you're using your mod and one of the batteries fails and the other one does not, the 
one battery that's still working may be overloaded and the failing of this battery causes this one to fail too, which can lead to a dangerous situation. So ideally what you want is to have both batteries wear low at the same time and by the time that they're close to dying you'll know by that point that it's time to pull them both and you'll be able to charge them up before you have any problems. Uh, this applies uh, to both types of setups, parallel and series, but uh, it's very important, specifically for series, to always buy the same type of batteries and uh, to keep a married pair together. Well guys, my time with you has come to a close today. I'd like to thank Ryan a lot for having me on today. It's been a blast. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comments below. Uh, follow Ryan at Squidude on Instagram. Follow me at Oimods on Instagram. Uh, hope this has been helpful. Hope you've learned a lot. And we'll see you next time.